thanks for speaking with us again. We've spoken with you a few times, so、uh, it's great to get an update. Now, you've been living in Singapore for a number of years now, and you're a big fan of the immigration policy. But recent elections in Singapore have shown that the opposition has made big inroads,、uh, and Singaporeans are outwardly expressing the fact that foreigners are stealing away their jobs and causing high inflation. Do you think there is room to tweak the immigration policy? Well, whenever and throughout history, whenever things start going wrong, the first people you blame are the foreigners, right? Because the foreigners look different, they talk different, they have a strange religion, they smell bad, their food smells bad. <laughs> I too, and I cannot tell you how many places I've been where people complained because the foreigners' food smells bad and they smell bad. So people always react against the foreigners first, which is what is happening in Singapore too. But historically. Nations which are open to outside capital, ideas, energy are the ones that are ambition. Those are the ones that have been the most successful societies. Singapore is a nation of immigrants. Singapore was a swamp 50 years ago, and then they appealed for foreigners to come, and the rest is the rest is the great success story. Yes, Singapore is having a reaction, but that's more the normal reaction of things getting less good、mm-hmm. and having slower slower times. Now, Malaysia is a country that has a very huge、um, population of immigrant workers as well. They're not necessarily res-、um, permanent residents, but they're workers in this country. Do you think that Malaysia has something to learn from Singapore in terms of immigration policy? I think the whole world has something to learn from. It's not just Singapore. You know, America is a nation of immigrants. Nobody in America, virtually nobody in America, came from America. Their families came from somewhere else. And America became wildly successful. You look at the great successful countries of history; they were melting pots. People came from all over the world, and when those countries closed off, they started having problems. In 1962, Burma was the richest country in Asia, and then they said, "Get rid of the foreigners," and they closed off. Fifty years later, Myanmar was the poorest country in Asia. You can do it that way, but it has always led to decline. So everybody has something to learn from countries with open borders, like the U.S. had once upon a time, Singapore had for the past forty years. Yes, you bring in new blood, new energy, new ambition, new drive, new capital. That's how you build a, a society and a country, not by closing off. And one of the things that has interested me about、um, Malaysia is Malaysia has started opening up after being pretty, pretty closed in many ways for a long time.、Mm-hmm. Seems to me they're starting to open up. You recently were made a director of an Indonesian resource company called、uh, Geo、uh, Advantage or something like that.、Um, do you? How much of a stake do you own right now in this company?、Uh, I don't own any shares at the moment. I have options. I have options on two million shares. Two million shares. Yes. And、um, are you on the lookout to buy more commodity type、uh, companies around Southeast Asia? I'm always on the lookout to buy anything that's cheap、mm-hmm. where there's an opportunity. So whether、yeah. it's commodity companies in Southeast Asia, it doesn't matter. Of course, the answer is yes. I may buy a commodity company in Malaysia today. If I weren't here right now, I probably would be buying some shares in a commodity company in Malaysia right now. Yes, I'm always on the lookout for something to buy or sell. What should a person with a full time Day job and very little time investing. I mean, you've been a very successful investor, and you've taken a lot of time to study your investments. But what about a person who hasn't got the time to do that? Well, then they should not invest in anything. They should put their money、uh, only in things they know. You know, they don't know they know something, but they should put their money in the bank until they find something that they know a lot about. Everybody, even with a full time job, especially with a full time, knows something. About something, even if it's just the industry they're in, and when they see opportunities, and they can do some more homework and and make investments. Otherwise, the best thing to do is to do nothing.、Mm-hmm. Do not invest in things you don't understand because you're going to lose money. And、uh, what about retirees who need to protect their incomes? I mean, the bond markets around the world are being rocked right now. How? What should they do? Yeah,、right、central、now? banks and politicians around the world are ruining the people who saved for the future. Who did the right thing and saved up their money? Now they're being ruined by politicians because they're getting no money, and they're being ruined at the expense of the people who did it the wrong way. The people who went out and ran up huge debts and bought six houses with no money down and no and no income. No, it's astonishing that politicians are ruining the people who did it right at the expense of the others.、Uh, 
I don't have an answer because I, like everybody else, is looking for higher income. This is impossible to get without big risk at the moment. And all I can say is, you know, we're being ruined by the politicians and eventually our day will come back. But just try to hang on while you can. Mm -hmm. But don't go rushing off into some something that's too good to be true because it probably is too good to be true. Jim, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.